and welcome once again to another awesome episode of Squirrel Radio, where I talk to myself, uh, in hopes that some of my mental meanderings will, I don't know, help someone else for whatever, for whatever reason. I like to talk. I would do this anyway, so I figure, shit, if I'm going to talk anyway, I might as well put it on YouTube, because every once and again, I make people laugh, or I say something that's kind of enlightening, and it's usually never intentional, because I just fucking talk pathologically. Um, I am multitasking, taking a walk on this gorgeous morning, so you, there's going to be a lot of ambient noises and traffic and such, so bear with me. Um, the sound quality is better when I record these in front of my computer, but that's really fucking boring, and I like to be outside, so. I'm going to call this one, Breaking Up Is Hard To Do. That's a famous song. It's old as shit. I don't know if it ever got famous in New Zealand. Anyway, in my last podcast, or I'm not really sure, I, I've recorded a couple of these and I'm not sure what order I'm going to put them up in, but, um, you know, I recorded one uh, last week or, or some such um, called Breakups and Identities, and I kind of talked about uh, protecting yourself from identity changes, uh, a major one of which is breaking up with someone. When you break up with someone, that part of you that was with them ceases to exist, and that identity shift can uh, leave us raw and reeling. So, you know, that's that's what I talked about. If you if you didn't listen to it and think that that might be interesting, go back and listen to it. Trying to keep these only to like half an hour. It's not that easy because I talk a lot. Um, I reckon life is a like a filibuster. You can't die if you don't stop talking. So that's my path to immortality. So I'm just going to fucking talk constantly until I'm dead. Uh, where the hell did that come from? <laughs> anyway. Something interesting happened to me regarding that particular scenario. Now, what happened between me and my loved one will remain just between us, because I believe in privacy. I'm not going to fucking spew my guts out and give everybody every detail of what happened. But suffice it to say that we worked things out, and we're stronger than ever. And, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm totally at peace with that relationship. There's no doubt in my mind it's going to work out. And I'm just living life and very, very happy and grateful. Most, most of all grateful. Uh, because love is a truly beautiful thing. It's the, only, it's the only thing really worth living for. So when you find it, uh, yeah, it's, it's worth working on. And it's worth working towards. Anyway, it got me thinking when we got back together. I felt a lot of feelings that um, related to how I always felt about couples who broke up but got back together. Um, I'm 31 years old, and up until now, I've never, never thought I'd be the kind of person to break up with someone and then get back together with them. My entire life, I have had this steadfast idea that the kind of couples that did that were weak, Um, that they were people who, you know, you you may break up because you know that something in the relationship is broken, but you get back together because you're lazy about finding a partner who is truly worthy, or, you know, they they basically just don't want to be alone. So they take the easy route and just get back together and try to force, you know, a relationship that doesn't work to to try and work. And the result is that, you know, they're not happy. Or, 
you know, you have those couples who are just kind of addicted to drama and break up and get back together all the time just, just because it's fucking interesting or something insane like that. I'm not, you know, I'm not really sure that's never been, yeah, that's, that's certainly not something I'm interested in. I, I do tend to draw a lot of drama to myself, but it's never intentional. (laughs) I'm not going to say it finds me. I obviously do something to bring it into my life, but, uh, I, I certainly don't seek it out in the form of having, I don't enjoy fighting with my boyfriend. Um, and in our version of fighting is not, it's not conventional fighting at all. Um, so it just got me thinking, like, I did, I, I did, uh, have some insecurities, like, oh my God, how are my, fr- well, like, what are my friends going to think? How are they going to perceive me? Because, you know, we're, we're being judged. Let's be honest, people. We're being judged constantly. There's nothing we can do about it. We judge others. People judge us. It's the fucking world of judgment. I, I don't like to partake in it. I like to think that I'm, not, I'm really not judgmental in a broad sense. But we, we do even subconsciously apply these judgments to people. And, you know, my, my concept of the couples that, that break up and get back together, that was just me being judgmental of a relationship that I'm not in so that I can't understand it. You know, so here I am, I'm worried. I'm like, oh my God, my friends are going to think that I'm this kook. Like, you know, they're not going to think that, that this guy and I have a stable relationship because he broke up with me. And then a week later, we started talking again and we weren't sure. And then I fucking broke up with him. And then (laughs) the same day I broke up with him, we ended up getting back together for good. And again, I'm not going to explain our, because I could sit here and tell you and find detail exactly what happened that day, but you're, you know, no one is, no one is going to understand it because they weren't there and they didn't feel the way that I feel and they didn't felt the way that he felt. And there's no way that anybody could understand what happened. I'm not even fucking sure I understand it, to be completely honest. There, there's still parts of it I'm like, what the hell was that? But anyway, what happened happened. It brought us together in, in a very permanent way. All of the icky feelings that were there are gone. All of the negative energy that made us feel like we were forcing the relationship is gone. And we are solid. Now, I know that. But I also know that to outsiders, we just look like a couple that broke up and got back together. And they can apply those same judgments that I was talking about that I felt towards, you know, couples who who break up and get back together uh, to me. And that that just, it pisses me off and it makes me realize that, that it's really unfair. You know, like, if you're not in that relationship, you really can't understand why people break up and get back together. Everybody's journey is is so different. And it just it just got me thinking like it's just so it's so unfair. You know? I'm in this situation now where you know my boyfriend and I are, t- you know, we're, we're very serious about our future together and, and trying to, to talk to my friends about a lot of that stuff. They won't even hear it because they're like, you guys, you guys just broke up last week. And I, you know, look, look, I understand the logical side of my brain says, you get it. You broke up to an outsider. Your relationship looks unstable. But again, they don't know, they're not in the relationship and they, they don't know, they don't know what's really happening. They didn't go through that. It's just tough. You know, it's, it's, it's tough to accept the judgment that they put on you, even though I understand where it's coming from. It's a real spiritual conundrum. And it's like, 
it, it's not like my boyfriend and I have to fucking put in time for good behavior. You know, we have to we have to prove to our friends that we're we're a stable couple. And it's like Jesus, what do I gotta prove myself? Uh, you know, I know how I feel. But yeah, I mean, it, it is, it's true. Like, you, you do have to, to do that to some respect. And I'm not going to lie. Part of me is terrified <laughs> that something's going to happen and we break up again because I'm telling you what, you, you can do it once, but you can't. <laughs> it's, it's a one-time deal. Like, you, everybody gets a second chance. But repeat offenders, nah, it's not going to, you know, it's not going to work. I don't think that I, I, I have, like I said, I know that this is going to work out, that we're exactly where we should be, and, and we're going to be, you know, we're just going to be together. It's just, just how it's going to be. But I know it certainly made me take a look at the way I view other relationships. And, uh, yeah, join me in, in just stopping the, that judgment. Please, I'm, I'm begging everybody, get on that train with me. When you see a relationship, don't judge it. You're not in it, so you have no fucking right to judge it. And I'm sorry, I know I'm using you, and it's an accusatory kind of word, and I'm not saying you, I'm just saying, like, just be open to the fact that there are things going on that you don't understand because you're not in their head, and you're not in that relationship, and there's no way... To know how people feel. God, this traffic is abhorrent. Anyway. It also got me thinking. There's a second aspect of this. You know, the first major aspect is don't, you know, don't judge a relationship you're not in. You know, maybe people do break up and get back together, and maybe they are addicted to the drama, but that's their relationship. Let them, let them do it, you know? It doesn't affect me. You know, and, and yeah, it's... I don't know, you can think whatever you want to, but the fact of the matter is that you still, you know, just just leave it. And it's not even just romantic relationships. It can be friendships, it can be... You know, people don't understand the relationship I have with my family members because they're kind of strange. Because I've had kind of a strange relationship with most of my family members for my whole life. You know, I'm 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 detached from them in a long in a large way, but I'm also very 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 close to them. Um, I'm not, I'm not gonna shit. That could be a series of fucking podcasts. <laughs> Summer's family saga. Um, but, uh, yeah, the, the second whole, the second part of this is, you know, as far as getting back together, I, you know, relationships are such a, such a personal thing. Because, you know, like, like I've been saying in a lot of my podcasts, the the best thing you can do for yourself is just accept the way that you feel and don't fight it. And don't tell yourself that what you're feeling is wrong. If you're feeling it, it's not wrong. You can't help the way that you feel. You can choose to acknowledge the feeling and then act differently. But that takes a lot of work because we usually act on instinct and habit. And that's natural. And I would, I would always urge people to say, okay, well, what have I done in the past? How have I reacted to the past? What is my habit? What do I normally do in this situation? And how, how could I change it to maybe make myself feel a little better? Or maybe improve the situation instead of fucking repeating the same bullshit over and over and over again. Um, but, you know, in my particular situation... And I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm not going to give, I'm not going to give specific details, but in this particular case, I think it would be beneficial to, to give an example. You know, part of this for me was, how much do you trust the person, and how much 
really, how much do you think people can change? Now, in a broader sense, this looks like, uh, you know, if you're in a relationship with an alcoholic and they start going to AA meetings or, you know, someone says that they're going to start doing something differently for you. I mean, this whole concept of can people change? I believe they can under the right circumstances for the right reasons. People can change. I have changed. I'm nowhere near the person that I used to be. But it takes a lot of effort. You know, there were things that both my boyfriend and I had to change. Our relationship, we broke up, it was legitimate. We were both trying to force a relationship that wasn't quite working. Like, we loved each other, but something felt not right. We did the right thing by breaking up. It was what we were supposed to do. Because it both, you know, we both had some shit to figure out. And with that comfort and security of a relationship, you tend not to work on yourself because you're like, oh. Or you tend to, to blame yourself. There's just a lot, of, it's a lot of shit that goes on. That week apart, I evaluated some shit, he evaluated some shit. And you ask yourself that question. Will I change? Can I change? Will I change? Do I want to change? Now there it is right there. Because I'm here to tell you, no one is going to change permanently unless they want to. That's, that is the hardcore fact. We can tell ourselves that we're going to change for someone else, but I'm it's not, it's not going to stick. It's not going to stick unless you want to change. I used to pick on myself for being fat my whole life. My whole life I picked on myself for being fat. And I always knew that someday I would lose the weight. I talked about that in you know, my part one of the, the, the fat podcast or whatever, the fat chronicles. Um... And, and I changed. I lost that weight because I wanted to. Because one day I snapped and was like, right, no more. No more. Put down the fucking candy bar. Put down the burrito. And pick up a piece of chicken. And some broccoli. You know? Get your ass on that elliptical treadmill. Whatever. Go outside and go for a walk. Just fucking do something. And do it for you. No, I... I I'm just saying this as an example. I went into my weight loss program that first day with a friend. My friend only had about 30 pounds to lose. I had 130 pounds to lose <laughs> to reach our goal weights. And again, I'm just doing this as an example. I'm sure you guys can all think of examples in your life where you've tried to change and maybe it was because someone else wanted you to change and not because you necessarily wanted to change. And, and how did that work? I, I want to know. Did it, did it stick? It's this interesting, right? Anyway, my friend, she was getting into her early 30s, I think, or late 20s. I don't even remember how old she was. But anyway, she was feeling kind of overweight and unattractive and kind of had some insecurities about how her fiancé or long, long-term long boyfriend was feeling. So she wanted to lose 30 pounds to, to kind of get back to the, to the woman she used to be um, for him. And I didn't judge that. I said, great, beautiful, wonderful. Let's do this journey. Let's keep each other motivated, you know. The thing was is she needed constant motivation from me, but I didn't need any motivation because... In my brain, I had already lost the weight. It was just, like when I change, I make that change immediately <laughs> in my head. And then the rest is just practice. Same thing with this relationship. In my brain, I'm already married to this guy. And every day is practice. <laughs> Being a good wife. <laughs> the rest is just titles. No, we're not married. Will we get married? Probably. 
very likely, but it's not going to be right now. You know, it might be a year to a couple years from now. But in my brain, I've already made that change. And the rest is just practice. It was the same way when I lost weight. Make the change in your brain and then change your habits to align with what you want to change. So yeah, it took, took a year and a half to lose all that weight, but I did it. And my friend didn't stick to the diet. She didn't change her habits, didn't stick to the diet, didn't exercise, and she ended up gaining weight. I shouldn't laugh. It's not funny. But she, she, it didn't stick. And she still ended up getting married. And now they have a baby. And they're together. And they're a good couple. Oh, quacklings. Oh, I love baby ducks. God, they're cute. Um, so it's not bad. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just using this as an example as if you want to change. You, I'm not going to come after your kids. Stop. God, this duck is going to, like, attack me. Um, you know... Just use it as an example. Change for you. Change because you want to change. You know, there were things that I had to change about myself to be more secure in this relationship. And I, and I addressed those issues. It was mostly concerning my emotions and my insecurities and accepting my emotions. Because when I wasn't accepting my emotions, they would come back to berate me. And I'd, I'd fucking fall off the wagon completely. My emotions would just completely take over and... I'd end up a goddamn mess. No one wants to deal with that. I don't want to deal with that, and he didn't want to deal with that. You know, and when you keep slipping the rails like that and keep being insecure about the relationship you're in, it's going to make the other person start questioning, well, well, what the fuck? I can't be, you know, no one wants to be with that person. I didn't want to be with that person. That was part of why I wanted to break up. I was like, I can't keep doing this to myself. It hurts. But, you know, but during that week, I did a lot of work, and I was like, I'm just going to, I'm not going to fight my emotions anymore. I'm just going to accept them. And the shit that I thought he broke up with me for, turns out, wasn't ever a problem. He broke up with me for completely different reasons that I would have never, ever guessed. <laughs> you know? So, sometimes even when you're in a relationship with someone, you have no idea what they're thinking because... They don't know what they're thinking. They've got to figure that out for themselves. You know, it's like, yes, you're in a relationship. You're, you're in it with somebody. But you can only help them to the extent that they are aware of their own issues. If they're not aware of the problem, neither one of you can help it. You know, you've got to leave that to them to, to sort that out on their own. So yeah, the way shit was, wasn't, it wasn't working. That time apart was, was critical to both of us to figure out, hey, do you actually want to be in this relationship? Are you willing to give it another try? To accept the fact that people are going to judge you and they're going to think you're an unstable couple because you've broken up and now you're back together and they're all just kind of waiting. It's a nail biter. Are they going to stay back together? You know, they put up with a lot of shit from... My friends put up with a lot of shit that week. I was I was not well. I had lost someone that I loved, and I was dealing with that. And, that, you know, I was grateful to have friends who, who helped me with that. But at the same time, I have to concede that, that those friends, they see me get back together, and they're like, Oh, Jesus. She's going to fucking... You know, what's going to happen now? Are we going to have to deal with her again? Fucking, and, and I can say, I can say all day long, no, it's not going to happen. No, we're back together for good. But Jesus, I know that that's how I feel. I know that that's a, a knowing deep inside me, but uh, shit could change. I don't, I don't, I don't know shit. <laughs> that's the God's honest truth. Something could happen today, tomorrow, five years from now. I, there, there is no such thing as a promise in this world. The only thing that is absolutely certain in this world is change. And that doesn't happen on our time, people. Whether you want to believe in a higher power or not, change happens, and it happens on their time, not on your time. <laughs> so yeah, things will change, but 
Jesus, now I'm probably confusing people because I'm talking about changing two different capacities. Changing yourself, changing your ego, your habits, that is what I'm talking about. Taking effort, you know, like believing that people can change that. Yeah. I believe that people can change because I have. And I've seen other people make huge changes in their lives. Like prisoners or, or you know, rapists and stuff that, that go to jail or and get treatment. You know, 99% of people will always think that that person's a piece of shit. But if they really want to, they can change. We don't have to be victims of our own ego. We can change the things that we don't like about ourselves. And guess what? You may, like, I don't, I have some really not great qualities that I just, I'm not willing to change. One of them is my lack of filter. When I talk, I don't have much filter. It gets me in trouble. It does. <laughs> um... And, and I just, it's really hard. And I know that that's a, that's a wimpy, sh that's a wimpy solution. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I have tried to varying degrees to, to install that filter. And, and really the closest I've come is to deferring to friends who I know have a better filter than me. So I say, Hey, should I say this? You know? And then I just, I just rely on their judgment. It's like I'm borrowing their filter. It's not easy for me. Uh, but that's something I accept about myself. And I just proceed forward, you know. If someone asked me to change that part of myself, I, d I don't know. I don't know if I... One, I wouldn't unless I really wanted to. And two, I, I do want to to some degree. But I've... It's just... It's phenomenally hard. So, you know... Just take responsibility. You know, if you're going to leave a quality in place that, that tends to be an issue... <laughs> leave it there, but take responsibility. Like, I, I have... I've taken complete responsibility for the fact that sometimes I say shit and I get in trouble. And, and I have to deal with that situation. You know? Just know that sometimes those aspects of yourself are going to get you in trouble. I don't know how. How did I get there? Good lord. It's a wonder no one listens to this shit. I'm constantly. Anyway. Breakups. They're a real bitch. But for the first time, I see their function. Because there's nothing. Like, it's like turning over new soil. I don't know if you guys have ever tilled a garden. But it, there's something about a breakup. You know, breaking up with my fiancé was, was the start of my blog. Was the start of, of my first real spiritual transformation and that was the most beautiful gift I've ever been given and then even this relationship two months in when it started it start it just something started to to move to shift and I went through my second transformation it was smaller but no less significant there's something about relationships Interacting with others, getting your feet wet and dirt and your hands dirty, uh, because you're letting your heart kind of get get pulled at. It just has this way of waking you up, and it's because it hurts. You gotta hit bottom to to look up and and see that it's like okay, I've I've hit bottom. There's nowhere to go but up. How do I get there? Um, man. Breakups can really, can really do that. And you can either wallow in that pain or you can be like, okay, well, what did I learn here? And yeah, sometimes you don't get back together. I never got back together with my fiancé. Uh, I'm pretty sure if he saw me, he, 
he'd run or I'd run. I'm not sure what would happen. And it's a situation I was so anxious to avoid. I moved halfway across the fucking world. <laughs> um, but that didn't happen to me this time. I was convinced that that my boyfriend and I had what it took. We had the raw materials for a very strong relationship and there was just small tweaks that that we each needed to make the relationship work because it it wasn't working the way that it the way that it was. Um and we had to break up to make those adjustments and move forward. So I don't know, it just, it just made me have a lot more respect for other people's relationships and their journey. And to say, hey, stop being a judgmental cunt. You don't know their path. You, don't, you can't see the path they're on. All you can do is, is just hope that whatever they're going through, it, it turns out for the best for them. And to send them, to send them love. And, you know, if a friend does break up, you just... You send them comfort. I, I had a friend, you know, right before I, I don't know, about a year before I left for New Zealand, she got married, and they'd been together since college. I mean, I knew this couple to be solid for, Jesus, they lived together for six, seven years before they got married, and I was so moved that I could be at their wedding. And not a year in, One of them found, you know, she found out that that the guy was cheating on her. I mean, Christ Almighty! And you know, no, judgment is not in my heart, and I thank God for that every day, because it's so easy. People did this when I broke up with my boyfriend. It's so easy to say, "What an asshole!" No, no, that's that's not right. You don't know why they did it. You know, you you can't understand the relationship. My friend has dealt with this situation. She dealt with it in an extremely mature manner. And she's a strong woman. And going through that showed her, or, or you know, made her realize just how strong she is. Th- these things that happen to us, they suck something fucking ferocious. But they can also teach us how strong we are, and they turn out to be an overall positive experience. So I'll just, I'll, I'll throw this concept out there real quick. Net positive. All right. When I was, uh, during that week I'd broken up, I was experiencing a lot of emotions, and, and part of what I needed to deal with was my emotions in general. And uh, so what I started doing was keeping an emotional journal. Anytime I felt an emotion, I would write it down, and I, I would write down where the source of that emotion was coming from, and and I was just going for net positive, <laughs> you know, I just, at the end of the day, I counted up how many negative emotions I felt, and how many positive emotions I felt, and I just tried to keep it net positive, people, net positive, the negative shit is gonna happen, you have friends, you have resources to help you kind of sort it out. We're just going for not positive. That's it. That's all. You want the overall experience to be positive. The, the negative is going to happen. There's nothing you can do about it. Just net positive. And because I'm a biologist, it just reminds me of an action potential in a stimulated nerve. Your nerves get lots of pluses and minus signs. No, don't fire. Positive, yes, fire. And basically, your nerve will only fire if it's net positive. It's getting both signals from different areas of the body at any point in any time. It waits for net positive, and then the floodgates open. And it sends a signal. And that's, that's just what I go for, net positive. So... I hope that makes sense. It, of course, it doesn't make sense. I've been rambling for, what, fucking half an hour? I don't even know. Yep, 30, 35 minutes. All right, I'm going to call it. I will end on this note. If you have a friend goes through something, or if you go through something, don't judge it. Just go through it, let it happen. 
Keep it net positive. Ask yourself, if, is it worth it? How do I really feel? You know, I got back together with my boyfriend because I knew deep down that we can make it work. It wasn't working, but it wasn't hopeless. I'm not, I'm not saying that there, there's no perfect situation. I'm not looking for a fucking pat on the head or a gold star here. I'm just a human trying to figure shit out. And this is how I do it. So I thank you for your time. Light us. I just want to add this one final thing to that, to the breaking up is hard to do. Um, one of the things that was said during the conversation with my boyfriend and I that I think woke up both of us was that he was treating me like the problem, but I was the solution. So I, I offer that to you guys and, and just apply that. Apply that across the board. If you're having a, if you think you're having a problem with something, if you think you're struggling with something, especially in a relationship, say, is this person really the problem? Or can they be the solution? Because that, I think that was one of the shifts that's like, you know, there were struggles for both of us. We knew that we loved each other, but there was just something in the way. There was a problem. Neither one of us could really identify. And we were looking at the situation backwards. We were thinking that, you know, I was thinking this relationship is the problem, not the solution. This relationship is making me feel too many emotions and I can't handle it, so it's a problem. When really, the relationship was a solution to make me learn how to deal with that aspect. And, and you know, I, I can't tell you what my boyfriend was feeling, but I know that he experienced something different. He, he experienced the same kind of concept with a different aspect. Of, of what he was going through. And, and that, that's his journey. And that's completely his journey. And I only understand a very small part of, of what he went through. I'm just grateful that it happened. Um, so yeah. The problem versus the solution. I think, I think that, was, that was really important. And, and I keep thinking about that. Because anytime I feel a slip... Or I think, oh, God, you know, feeling a little insecure. I'm thinking, he's the solution, not the problem. Talk to him. Just just talk it out. Um, yeah, that helped me. So just wanted to add that. All right, I'm, I'm really done now, I promise. Thank you for listening. God only knows when I'll have another one of these.